Yo, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, hi, my name is David and I'm on the journey of discovering the wonderful world of Gunpla. Building, weathering, customizing and diorama stuff. You will find it all here. A couple of weeks ago, I asked my viewers what they would like to see next on this channel. And 69% of you voted for a diorama of our favorite red comet. So here we are. As always, I'm starting with the kit itself. You won't have to watch me build this because by the power of editing. <laughs> we can jump straight to the finished kit. Look, of course, Char is a high decorated veteran and therefore his Zaku has already seen one or two battles meaning we're adding some weathering and rust effects. For that, let's disassemble the kit again. I'm using Tamiya Gundam markers to add a base layer of black color to the pieces. Let it dry a bit and then come in with a melamine sponge to wipe off most of it again so that I'm left with just a faint hint of black coat in the corners. The melamine sponge has smaller pores and is firmer than your regular kitchen sponge. This way you have more control over how much color you wipe off. Normally, I would go piece by piece, but let's make things quicker and ask for the help of a friend. Thank you. Now I'm coming in with a regular sponge. Here I'm using packaging foam and add some chipping with Vallejo pale sand. After the paint dried, I take my tiniest brush and connect some of the chipping dots and some light streaks here and there. For this step, I use the same color that I used for chipping, but make sure that the paint is very thinned down, almost like ink. Now comes the magic. I pick a brownish tone, chocolate brown to be more precise, same liquidity as before and fill in some of the chipping spots to add some depth. If you're interested in a more in-depth rundown of this method, check out the link up here. I made a whole video about this weathering technique. And with that, we're done with the kit. 
Now for something new. Let's try and paint some rust effects on weapons. With each new build, I try to learn something new. And this time around, I would like to try out some techniques that I saw on the Night Shift channel. I will walk you through the steps right after we're done with preparing this bazooka. First, I used Vallejo White to lay down a foundation. In this step, you can dilute the color just a tad bit. This way, the color will stick in a broader fashion and cover more ground. After that, pick a dark rust color and repeat the dipping process. This time around though, I didn't dilute the color whatsoever. I want the speckles to be as small as possible. This way we can reproduce the rust texture as best as possible. For the last pass, I used an even lighter rust color. And already, we're coming closer to the finished look. We just need to blend everything together. For that, I mixed up rust colors and Vallejo pigments. Anything that gives you this orange brownish hue, the pigments that I used are simply called Rust and Old Rust. Try to mix up a thin coat and then start laying it out step by step. Once it dries, it really starts to look very realistic. After that, I used the toothpick method to speckle on some lighter tones to give the texture more detail. Some of them though were too bright, that's why I went in with a brush and fixed it up a bit. As a last step, I added some of the pigments on the rear of the bazooka. However, I decided to brush them off again because the effect was too strong. Anyways, I'm pretty happy with the result. I'll definitely want to refine this technique and practice on some more weapons in the future. Then it was time to prepare the Zaku for the floating effect. For that, I used an aluminum rod. The problem though is that I had to fixate all the joints in order to stop them from moving. If all the upper joints would be stiff, they would be able to hold the Zaku. So I used Tamiya cement and hot glue to glue them all down. While the hot glue was drying, I set out and looked for a frame that I could use as a base.
perfect. For the lighting, I used some cheap LED decoration lights that I would wrap around the aluminum rod. Its battery compartment was hidden inside of the frame. Then I went on and started to build the diorama. Okay, so what's coming up now is not my brightest moment and um, quite frankly, it's embarrassing, yes, and you can also laugh if you want. Just be nice in the comments, okay? <laughs> okay, so yes, for some reason I thought the hot glue, yes, just the hot glue without any contraption whatsoever would be enough to hold the rod. It's, it's so stupid. You can see me panicking when I realized the hot glue would just run around all over the place. Luckily, I remembered the clamps that I built way back then. They were perfect to hold the rod in place while I fixed everything up. Planning your step goes a long way. Keep that in mind. I will for sure. So I ended up using the cap of a spray can to hold the rod while I filled the surroundings with plaster of Paris. That did the trick. After that dried, the rod was held in place perfectly. Then it was all about filling up the frame with styrofoam and designing the impact zone. At this point, I would like to give a shout out to all of you who subscribed to the channel. While I was working on this video, the channel surpassed its 1000 subscriber mark. So thank you all who decided to join me on this journey. I hope that I can build this channel into a place where we can all share the passion for this wonderful hobby. Now that the base was done, I covered it with Mod Podge and sprinkled on some rubbles and smaller rocks to give the base some more visual interest. Once the glue dried, I primed the base with regular black color and started to brush in some highlights.
I can't help but think about a certain scene in a certain anime. Okay, so on to the explosion effect. I used florist's wire to form a wire frame for the cotton to sit on. That was very finicky, I must say. I bet there is an easier way to do this, but at that point this seemed to be the best solution for me. I mean, it worked out fine. I stuck it on a funnel, this way I wouldn't have to hold it while gluing on the cotton. I worked in layers until the entire wireframe was covered in a cushy ball of fluffiness. I used regular spray paint to give the cotton ball a thin layer of color. Make it real thin, otherwise the LED lights won't show through. The final step was to wire all the LEDs through the cotton ball and stick it to the aluminum rod. Add some more cotton around the barrel and we're done. Enjoy the reveal and the beauty shots. And I will see you in the next video.